On this week's show, Aiden Duffy reports from the girls varsity soccer match against Baldwin. Chisholm Malogo interviews Ron Lancaster. Brittany Sun reports from the Bluegrass Festival. And students react to the first presidential debate. Lawrenceville's 10 minute newscast begins right now. From the studios inside the Lawrenceville School's historic Pop Hall, this is L10 with Alex Small. Hello and welcome to this week's show. On Friday, Lawrenceville will honor the 2016 Aldo Leopold Award recipient, Robert Burkhart. The award is given annually to alumni who have demonstrated brilliant, lifelong work in a significant field of endeavor. Burkhart, a member of the class of 1958, is the founder and former head of Eagle Rock School in Estes Park, Colorado. This Sunday, the Big Red Running Club and Student Council will host Lawrenceville's third annual Run for Color on the school's cross-country course. The event will raise money for the Williams Syndrome Association, an organization which supports patients with this rare genetic disorder. Students can sign up to run throughout the week in Irwin Dining Center. This week, Lawrenceville's Gender and Sexuality Alliance Club is bringing the national celebration of Ally Week to campus. Sponsored by the Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network, the event seeks to increase awareness of LGBT issues and help allies support the LGBT community. To celebrate, GSA will host discussions, movie screenings, and other activities throughout the week. On Saturday, the girls' varsity soccer team had a home match against the Baldwin School. Our senior sports correspondent, Eden Duffy, attended the game to bring us a report. Big Red girls soccer is back in action today against Baldwin as they look to capture their third straight Maple title. I'm with varsity captains Julia, Grace, and Kaylee. Uh, so guys, obviously tough game today. What are your first impressions? I mean, it was definitely really upsetting. We couldn't pull through with a win, but I was really proud of all the girls. I thought we put up a really good fight. It was a one goal game until the last minute, so we put up a really good fight all the way through. We almost won. It was really tough, and I'm really proud of all the girls, and it's a little upsetting we couldn't come through with a win, but I think we did a really great job overall. Is it bittersweet to begin your last season with Big Red? Yeah, most definitely. I'm so excited to be out here playing with all the girls and playing for Big Red once again. And it's really sad that it's my last season playing, but I hope we can pull through w with some wins and make it a really great last season. Yeah, we've been working really, really hard. And so it was a little bit disappointing to see that not come through, but I'm sure we can do so in the future. What are your goals going forward? I mean, we've had a quite a rough start to the season, I think. We haven't been able to pull through with a win yet, but it's just the beginning, and we're definitely developing a lot as a team, and we've been practicing really hard, so I think we can definitely get some wins going forward, and hopefully we can end the season with a winning record. And Maple Championship. Yeah, Maple 3 That's feet. important. <laughs> That's really important. So, Coach, um, tough game today, but going forward, what are you most excited about? Um, well, I think we saw a lot of great things today and yesterday. We played Pennington really tough and we played these guys really tough. We almost um, tied it up in both of those contests. Um, I think we have a lot of young talent, um, a lot of inexperience, but each, each day we're getting better and better. So really looking forward to next week against PDS. So obviously this team has a mix of new talent um, and old talent. So what do you think is the most important factor for this team's success? You know, I think... Um, Yesterday we probably played our most complete game um, and one of the reasons for that was everyone was contributing, um, everyone was playing their role and um, you know we weren't playing as individuals and I think if as long as we um, you know continue to do that and stay positive and um, you know work together as a, as a team I think we'll have a great season. Suffering a 3-1 loss today at the hands of Baldwin, girls varsity soccer will be looking to bounce back. From Chambers Field, I'm Aiden Duffy. Thank you Aiden. Last week, University of Toronto Associate Professor Ron Lancaster visited campus to discuss math and its application in the world around us. Our executive producer Chisholm Malogu had the opportunity to sit down with Lancaster and ask him a few questions. When did your love affair with mathematics begin? It began a long time ago. You know, I think for me, I was pretty good at mathematics. Like I kind of got it and understood it. I loved the patterns. I loved how things worked and the beauty of the subject. I thought it was very cool. And so in your presentation to the student body this morning, you showed us various pieces of artwork that featured mathematics in different ways. And um, a lot of these sculptures and portraits were things that we were familiar with, but we had never really seen them from a mathematical lens. Have you always seen things from this lens? Um, yes and no. I, I think I've always had a different way of looking at the world. So I've had a real creative streak, um, being able to see things differently. So I think that's been with me all my life. But I think it really came alive as a teacher mm -hmm. because I started to get students who maybe didn't like mathematics the same way I did. You know, the pure mathematics, the patterns, the formulas, the equations, they wanted more. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, I started to look at 
a lot of different things through a mathematical lens in the hopes that I could bring those into the classroom. And I know um, part of the resistance to mathematics, I think for some students, is the fact that they say, oh, how is this going to relate to my life? When am I ever going to need to know the equation of a circle walking down the street? But um, how do you think mathematics relates to the lives of all of us? Well, you know, that's a good question. And this morning's talk was kind of part of the answer. I, I think when I, so, you know, if I, if I do something in class on architecture or on design and I show some connections between mathematics and architecture, I, I don't think what I'm trying to do is to say, well, you're all going to grow up and be architects, and so this is how you're going to use it. But I think a lot of this is to give students an appreciation for how some people use mathematics so that we know more, you know, we have a better appreciation. So I think the applications for me are really important to help students you know, see it in the world around us and have an appreciation for it, even if they never use it. Part of what we're trying to do in mathematics is have students become better thinkers, to have students be better problem solvers, be more observant, be curious, care, want to learn, be a global citizen. There's, there's all of these things that we want to have happen. So I, I see it kind of two ways. I think the applications are important to give students a sense for where this lives in the world around us, why math is important, but it's also more than that. You know, it's those other issues I've raised that I think make math important to learn. On Saturday night, the Student Council hosted a bluegrass music festival on the patio of the Noise History Center. Our features reporter, Brittany Sun, went to the festival to bring us an update. I'm at the Bluegrass Festival and I had the chance to talk to the co-presidents of the Bluegrass Music Club, a couple performers, as well as an attendee, in order to get a sense of what bluegrass really is. Bluegrass music is a genre of music that originated really at the beginning of uh, American history. I guess the one way I'd describe it is uh, just uh, calmly fast-paced music, a lot, of, a lot of soul, a lot of heart and just an all-around great, great music to listen to. And what are you looking forward to the most tonight? Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of smiles, and then, uh, also a lot of people being exposed to bluegrass that normally do not listen to this kind of music. Feeling, I was feeling pretty nervous when I started playing. Once I got into it, it just felt like every other time I play it, you know? How did you get involved in bluegrass? On um, bluegrass, I'm actually pretty interested in bluegrass. I'm from kind of a southern area, like northern Florida, Jacksonville, right on the border of like Florida and Georgia. A lot of southern influence, so you know, I hear it a lot, bluegrass country, um, stuff like that. How are you feeling right now? Um, I feel good. Um, there are a lot of people, but... It was, it was good, the crowd was great. What did you perform? I performed Burning House by Cam. How did you get involved in bluegrass? Um, well, I'm from Texas, so I've been listening to country music a lot, but I wasn't necessarily like totally into country music. Um, and then I heard this song and I decided that I wanted to play it, so. Not only did Laurentius get introduced to a new genre of music, but also to a new culture as well. Thank you, Brittany. On Monday night, the Young Democrats and Young Republicans hosted a joint screening of the first U.S. presidential debate. Immediately following the debate, Election Club President Will Fournier surveyed members of the school community to find out what they thought. 385 people responded. The results are as follows. 84.2% of respondents watched the debate. 68.4% said they thought Hillary Clinton won the debate. 18.4% did not see a clear winner. And 12.6% felt that Donald Trump was a better debater. After watching the debate, 82.5% of respondents did not change their initial view on the candidates. 16.5% did. 55.2% of respondents wanted most to hear the candidates' views on the economy. Tied for second at 45.7% were the issues of terrorism and treatment of minority groups. That is our show for Thursday, September 29th. From all of us here at L10, thank you so much for watching.